A lot of people have been asking about tea. And you know, what kind of tea do I drink and so forth? What kind of tea to drink? And there are numerous amount of teas. There's a lot of different type of teas. And let me first stress, I'm going to explain something about teas. We're going to get a little bit into the type of teas that I use. But let me, let me emphasize and overemphasize that this is not a tea sermon. This is just an everyday occasion. It's like if you want to, I'm going to show you to make some teas for the road, you know, to replace that coffee habit, so to speak. My body can't handle coffee because it's, it's a shock to my system, you know. Plus, I'm, I have allergies. I'm practically allergic to everything. But I find that the teas help me a lot to actually uh, circumvent and keep my system flushed. So I, that's what I drink in the morning. Now there are a lot of different types of teas. Man, there's, the teas are numerous. So I want to cut through all the complication because the idea behind tea is to drink it for fun and to have a good time. See? And so I'm going to show you how to set up like I said before, there are a lot of different types of teas. It depends on what you're trying to, to accomplish. For me, I like to have my teas in the morning um, and then through the course of the day. So I need something that is going to be friendly to my system. Like the brown teas, the teas that are baked or uh, roast teas are more brown. That's Those teas you usually have for after a meal you know, after something sweet. It aids in the digestion. Um, the green teas are, have less caffeine in them and uh, they slowly absorb in the system. And uh, there are different types of green teas. Um, for me, my favorite tea, my favorite tea is the Lungjing. This is what it looks like. This is a long jing. And when you make a tea about this much, notice I'm not using a, a tea utensil because this is not a tea ceremony we're doing. This is strictly for enjoyment. You know, then you pour it in your, in your pot. Was this? So that was less than a handful. And like I was saying, there are different types of teas. Might, might do another little pinch. Right now, there are different types of pots. You know, if you try to get into drinking tea, this stuff could be really expensive. And there are different types of grades of teas. Now, this is the Lungjing, which, as you can see, the texture is different because it's steam and, and cut. It's chopped. All right, as opposed to the the maybe a, a Tung Ting Oolong, which is rolled. Right now, the thing about this. When it's chopped like this, it's a soft tea. It's very soft. So what happened is, in its constitution, it's very soft. So what happened is, when you boil the water, if you pour the water on right away, you'll scorch the tea. Now, so we'll show you how to make it in a second. We'll get it to make it in a second. Notice I'm also using a regular porcelain teapot. All right, and the reason for that is because this is just my everyday uh, tea utensil that I use. You know, get up in the morning, you can treat it rough. It's not clay, like if you want to do like a tea ceremony now, you'd use a regular clay material, which gives off a different texture, all right, which is a whole different thing. You get into a whole nother level of expense, and that's not what we're talking about here. I don't believe in bottled water because you don't know how long it's been sitting there. So what I like to do is just get the water from running water, that is, this is running water from the top, and if you have a problem with it, I usually say, well, and then you get, it's filtered a little bit, see, so you get your filtered water from the top, I like, prefer it that way, keep it natural, so they would tell me, you need to get water from, you need to get water, bottled water, because it's 
pure. But how do you know that it's pure? All right? You can't vouch for that. I, don't know, I have a problem with water that is sitting there all the time. You don't know how long it's been sitting in the bottle. So, yeah, while well, it's good, if you can have a filtration system set up, um, then you can, um, then that, that's a whole different level of expense. Water is very important because it, it will determine the taste of the tea. Teas are very old. Teas goes back thousands of years. There's a lot of benefits to them. There's a lot of research that's been going on in regards to teas. Um, you have the, they talk about how it has a lot of cancer curing agents in them now. It's also very good for losing weight. You know, there's a lot of things going on with teas. Uh, a lot of flo natural fluoride in the tea that helps with the, um, to reduce plaques in the gum. Um, also, it does have caffeine in it, but it's the, the caffeine that, the, that, tea, that this tea has, that the green tea has, especially this type, is, is, is slowly absorbing the system, so it doesn't shock your system, so to speak. And what happened is that you can drink, sure, the course of the day is good for the, I find that it's very good for the kidneys. Like I say, I have allergies, so I have to keep my system flush. So I have to keep a lot of liquid in my system, moving stuff out, especially in the summer with all the pollen and everything. So I find that the teas, teas help. So what I usually do in the summer is I used to make, I, I make a big batch of it and put it in like a, a huge container like this. And when I put in a huge container, I put honey and put lemon with it. When you drink teas, it's not something you have to be rigid about. Because remember, this is for the enjoyment, all right? And you can actually um, be creative. And this type might not, this one might not be the one that you like. You might, the taste might not be to your liking. You might, the jasmine are also good. Put, uh, there is osmophus. I like to drink osmophus in the, in the uh, summer because it's um, it's cooling on the system. So there, there are different types of tea that has a lot to do with the time of the year, which can have uh, has different constitution. Some are much cooler and some are much hotter in their constitution. Now I find that this is a very mellow tea. This, uh, this tung tea, T-U-N-G, T-I-N-G. You can get this at any Chinese tea uh, um, outlet. I'm not going to name any because uh, I'm just not going to name it. But anyway, um, and you can get different grades. So if you really have an expensive taste, oh, tea can run you up into thousands of dollars a pound. Right? But like I was saying, I'm not bringing out my utensils because then I have to bring out my expensive tea. And that's not what this is all about. You don't have to wait to get spring water or the greatest water to make your tea. You don't have to get the most expensive tea pot either. You just start off where you are. And then gradually move up. Gradually make your adjustment. Alright? Especially if you want to keep the coffee habit. You don't have to wait till you have a lot of money to go to the tea place to, and get all intimidated as to which tea to use. You can even mix it up with different combinations that you like until you find one combination. I have a combination that I really love that I might have it out next year. And I'll keep you uh, posted as, as to that. All right? Okay, so we, what, we did, what we do with any teas, you want to bring your water to a boil. Right now, like I said before, this tea, which is the uh, ten uh, dunting is very soft tea, all right. And because it's very soft in its constitution, if I should pour this hot water on it like this, it would shock the tea and scorch it. But there's a way to get around that. What you do, what I do, is put a little cold water inside it. See that? All right. So that when I pour, that's if I'm in a rush. Like I get up in the morning. And you can wait till the school off a little bit. But in the morning you're in a rush, you're getting ready to go to work or whatever. You don't have time. You want to get your tea and go. You want to hit the road. So this is a shortcut. Now you pour this in. 
I know it's some lifting so that the air passes through the hot water. It gets cooled off, you see? That's the reason for that. It mixes with the oxygen. Now you'll notice how the tea floats on top. Alright, so you cover it. This is a porcelain that I use. This is my everyday tea utensil. But tea teapots can run you into into some big dollars if you want to take uh, drink if you want to take um, the whole tea journey serious. And as a general rule, if you want to if you want to the, the the better the teapot, the more it will bring out the flavor of the tea. The clay pots are the better ones. And how do you know you have a good teapot? Are good clay pot. I usually go by the nozzle right here. The nozzle balances out with the height of the of the rim here. Tell me that I ha I have a good pot that is is properly made. That's one rule to go by. And also the type of clay that is used, and the process that it was used to make it, and also the artist. So there's a lot to go along with it. This is what it looks like. So now the tea is starting to steep. What the beauty about tea is also is that you can, when you make your tea, you can get one or two or three servings from it. Now because this is a soft tea, the flavor is released real fast. And because the flavor is released real fast, you won't be able to get a lot of servings. Some of them, like the brown teas, you can get five or six servings from it. In other words, you pour the tea out and, and back and fill it back up. Now, you notice I didn't do something in here. I did not wash this tea. And what I mean by washing is sometimes they might, you might see them pour the water in, into the tea, and then pour the water off. All right, that's called the washing process. But there are different washing methods, and it also depends on, the, on the, um, the price of the tea, because the more expensive the tea, the less you need to wash it. All right. This was a pretty high grade tea, so I'm not going to wash it. But when I pour it out, I'm only going to pour it out to here. All right? And then I'm going to refill. So I pour it out to here, to this level, so that the sediment and all the dirt will fall to the bottom. That's the reason why you let it sit for a while, and you can actually stir it a little bit. Don't be afraid of stirring it. Nothing gonna happen, All right? And then, because it's a soft tea, you don't have to wait that long. You pour it out. Now, I'm not using a strainer, because I want you to get a ch chance to see what it's supposed to look like. Now if I waited a little longer, I wouldn't have all this. Uh... Now check out the color of it. This is a very good hue. And I'll belt uh, what happened with this too. This is a little bit too harsh because it has a nice brown to it. It could have been much lighter. And now what I do, I go back and refill. Okay. And then that's how you okay, let me do this here. Get a spoon. And you can use a spoon too. If you know, I drink everything. I drink the green and everything because it's a so that's the color of the long jean. Notice it has a brownish hue, and the reason why it's so brown is because um, I, let, I let it sit a little too long. All right, it could be much lighter than that, and I can tell if it has a strong scotch scent to it, that means I am um, the tea was sharp. Mmm, this is great. I love this stuff. <laughs> this is just right. 
This is just right. So, now, here's a little tip. In the morning, you get up. There's no sugar. You know, the, the better the tea, the less the sugar is needed because it has its own um, fructose content to it, right? It's a nice way to break the habit of the coffee. And uh, sometimes if a lot of people don't drink a lot of water. I'm not a heavy water drinker, so I tend to uh, drink a lot of tea to, uh, to make up for the loss of the liquid, especially when I'm training. Now, mm, this, the tea, this tea has a nice sweet taste to it, as opposed to the jasmine, which would give you a nice floral, kind of harsh cut to it. This has a nice sweet taste. Um, so here's my little tip. I get up in the morning. I might drink two or three of these. Nothing wrong with that. What I do in the morning, I get me a lime or a lemon, preferably a lime, a green lime, and I squeeze, cut it and squeeze half of it in it. Pour a little honey at the bottom. Yes, I'm cheating. Pour a little honey at the bottom, mix it up, and then you give you a whole nother taste. During the evening, if after dinner or what have you, the brown teas I find much easier, much better because it helps with the digestion. Just finished drinking my cup, getting ready to drink another one. And here we go. All you have to do, that's the beauty of tea. Pour yourself another cup. So this one, this one serving was good. For three times, three or four times, you fill it up. And, now, and the constitution haven't changed now. You see? No, it's still there. Coloring, coloration is still nice. You see? That's the beauty of teas because you can keep adding water to it. You know, if you're sitting on having a conversation, you know, you can sit jolly, sitting back, relaxing, maybe with some pastries in the evening, right? If I was using a strainer or whatever, the sediment. But when you really make the tea properly, None of these floaters should be on top either. 